Days. I'm Mika Hyntiainen, and as uh, already mentioned, I'm going to talk about the voice map. It's a tool that helps uh, the composers and singers communicate with each other. Let's start. Um, first, uh, some words about my background, because I think this is um, quite interesting for, for this research. I'm a composer. I studied composition. Uh, at the Universität der Künste Berlin uh, mit Vocal Point Experimental Music Theater. I've been in many um, projects working with singers and I've had many different roles. Of course, role of a composer. I've also worked as a, as a musical assistant in many opera houses in Germany. And um, somehow I think I know something from the both sides, but I'm not a singer. And uh, I think that also can be advantage in this project. Um, I also have master's degree in mathematics, which is something that uh, can also be seen uh, in my um, in the, how I see this uh, this process. So, if you want to develop something, maybe a good way to start is to think: what is wrong? What does not work? What does not work is the communication between the composers and singers. There are often uh, different kind of problems there, uh, and it seems that there is no common language between those two groups. They're both musicians, they have a lot of experience, and they are, many times they are speaking about the same things, but somehow they use different words for that, and the communication just isn't there. And, of course, this is not good. For music. I was um, thinking about this situation in, in many hours when I was trying to fix things as a musical assistant and when I, I was doing my own pro projects as a composer, and I was thinking there has to be a way to create this common language. Maybe something that's really simple, a graphic analysis of a voice, like um, creating some sort of uh, common ground, something where the singers and the composers think like, okay, this is something we agree on. And if, if we have that one, then we can continue the discussion further and go to the interesting like, artistic details. They are way too complicated to, make, uh, to be part of the simple graphic analysis, but the uh, analysis can be the starting point of this discussion. Um, so, how do you do that? I, I was uh, trying to make these patterns as a composer alone, but uh, it was evident that I couldn't do it alone. I needed some help for that. And the help was this. Uh, the context is uh, I'm making my artistic doctoral degree uh, in applied study program uh, at the DOCMOS. And it's going to be a collaboration of different singers. I'm, of course, also working with composers, but mainly with singers. And I'm hoping to get even more universities to work with this one. At the moment, I'm negotiating with the uh, Technische Universität Berlin and, of course, my alma mater, um, Universität der Künste Berlin. So, first things first. Um, one of the really um, basic, but at the same time somehow really typical problem is that composers, especially inexperienced composers, compose for a virtual soprano. They have um, this idea, imaginary soprano, in their head, and they are composing for this person. And in the end, we have music that actually suits no one. Uh, we have music that's, that gets maybe uh, played and sung uh, once in a school performance, and that's the end of the story. Whereas, if you have in your head a real person, in this case Mia Heikkinen, and compose for that person, there are going to be many sopranos that are similar enough to this voice. And in this case, paradoxically, composing for a virtual soprano uh, makes music that actually suits no one. Um, as a side note, I might add that this is also the way most of the um, classical repertoire is composed and in this way, we know that at least this works. Of course, this is also a problem of, of the fast system. Uh, the fast system, sopranos, coloratura sopranos, dramatic coloratura sopranos, 
they are all part of the fax system and this idea is really useful if you are living in an opera house or if you're living in a huge festival. Most of the inexper inexperienced composers are not. It often just confuses the, <coughs> the composer and in the end they think that, okay, word soprano means this and this, and often uh, it doesn't. Too much information is lost and uh, a lot of the information is uh, in a, a singer's jargon that the composer does not understand, he can't decode it. Uh, things that I did want to take, uh, take uh, to my study with the voice map system were, there were actually four of them, but one of them I had to skip. Uh, first, I wanted to show the dynamic range of each show. This means, quite simply, how loud and how soft can this person uh, produce these sounds. I also noticed that there are different areas and passages uh, in voice. It means that one voice isn't just one voice, it's di uh, more than one different areas. In classical bel canto, this is called registers, but since register is such a historically loaded and complicated term, I've decided to keep it as part of my theoretical background, but in the voice map system I'm only calling it area. And the singer may decide um, if he or she dis uh, describes his registers, or for example, the overtone singing area, which is not a classical register. Also, how the sound, how the voice sounds like, uh, what kind of singer's format the, uh, the uh, singer has in each of his uh, tones is important, because that is something uh, uh, the composer can use. The fourth part would of course be the text, but that is something I'm not going to include in this study because it turned out to be too complex and too big of a theme. Luckily for me, I don't need to start from zero. Something like this already exists, but it's not ready. Uh, it's called Voice Range Profile. It's a tool used uh, by voice, uh, voice studies originally to analyze the speaking voice and how healthy it is. It gives actually more or less all the information that, that I'm looking for. So this is an analysis of a male voice, uh, untrained. Here we can see the frequencies, and here for the musicians, piano keyboard. So if you want to read that, it will see it here. And um, here are the dynamic possibilities. These are the loudest tones that he can produce, and these are the softest tones. And this is um, kind of a modern version of voice range profile, because it's also, also the registers are written in. In my uh, system, there are going to be much more registers or areas. Um, as you can see, it's something that's practical, but it's not ready. It's not something a composer could directly use. Um, I'm going to change the voice range profile so that it's more composer and singer friendly. Um, and one of the most important parts is that singer, him or herself, can decide before how many registers or areas he or she has, and I can also give names for them. Um, in addition to that, I'm also uh, making a list of questions that I have found interesting, that um, they are going to help the communication after the voice range profile analysis. As I mentioned, this is an artistic project. Um, the artistic part is testing the usability of the voice map. Uh, practically, this means that I'm going to compose two pieces, one for Mia Heikkinen. I'm, anal I'm analyzing her voice, which is one of the few sopranos with whom I haven't worked in Finland. So I'm going to analyze uh, uh, his voice, her voice <coughs> using the voice map. And the second piece is going to be a piece composed for five coloratura sopranos, and although the fast system tells they are all equal, they are all uh, coloratura sopranos, I'm hoping that the voice map is going to find differences between the voices, and these differences I'm going to be able to use in my composition. Thank you.